Now, my next uh, interview is a real treat for bookworms. Owen Colfer is a best-selling children's fantasy novelist who's penned more than 20 books. But I wonder if when he first wrote about the 12-year-old criminal mastermind Artemis Fowl way back in 2001, he would have ever believed the character would be the star of a big-screen Disney blockbuster nearly 20 years later. Well, let's uh, ask him. Owen Colford joins me now from Ireland. Good morning to you. Um, I have to say, I've got a long list of questions from my 12-year-old uh, son, who I think is probably your biggest fan. He was so disappointed that I couldn't get his books uh, autographed uh, by you this morning. So I'll ask you some of his questions. But first of all, tell us, for those who don't know, who is Artemis Fowl? Artemis Fowl is a 12-year-old uh, criminal mastermind who inherits his father's criminal empire and when his dad goes missing he decides to raise the ransom uh, by kidnapping a leprechaun and and getting the crock of gold so that's his his great plan and of course it all goes uh, horribly wrong and he finds himself on the side of the leprechauns uh, fighting a mysterious enemy and is he an evil genius because he's <clears throat> unlike some other children's um, fiction he, he he is sort of morally ambiguous isn't he he, he is very, he's very morally ambiguous. I wouldn't say he's evil, but he certainly considers, considers himself quite evil in the beginning. But what he learns really, and the point of the book is, he learns all about consequences. So when, when he does something bad, uh, something bad happens to him or to someone he loves and he feels terrible about it. So little by little, as the book goes on, he becomes a better and better person and starts to use his prodigious intellect for good. So there is essentially a, a moral compass w within the tale, isn't there? Absolutely. He's kind of, he's a little bit like a, a modern day uh, Robin Hood. That's how I like to think of him. He like, he takes from the rich and then eventually he gives a percentage of that to the poor. So he's, <laughs> uh, he likes to take his cut of everything, but he turns into a nice guy after eight books. Yeah, I suppose how nice depends on the uh, percentage <laughs> that you give. Yeah, exactly, um, exactly. <laughs> I, will, I will ask you one of my son's questions. Um, he's worried that adapting for a movie will destroy his image of the character that he's built up in his mind. What would you say to him? Well, I would say don't worry, because I've seen the movie a couple of times and it, it's, it's really great. And the young uh, boy, uh, Freddie Shaw, who plays Artemis, and Lara McDonald, who plays Holly, they're fantastic. And I think they will sync very closely to everybody's image. Uh, of the characters, they certainly sync with mine, and I suppose I've spent 15 or 20 years uh, with these characters in my mind. So tell your young fella uh, not to worry, all will be okay. <laughs> I will, I will do that. Uh, he's so jealous that he's not here doing this interview himself. Um, did you have any reservations, though, about Disney essentially getting their hands on, on your baby? I didn't, and I will tell you why. Because when I wrote this book uh, in 2000, 2001, I wrote it in our box room, um, which I could have only when the baby was awake. So I wrote it on the nappy changing table um, <laughs> at the cramped room. So for me, the smell of talcum powder always brings creativity around. But uh, So when Disney came to me and said, listen, we want to buy the book, for me, that meant I could have a little office in the garden. And it's as simple as that. So I really didn't hesitate. I said, oh my goodness, I can have an office that doesn't have talcum powder, I will take it. But once you make that deal, you just, you have to live with it and accept um, whatever uh, comes with it. And I think I couldn't be luckier because Kenneth Branagh and Judy Dench are involved. Uh, so that was enough for me. Uh, I, once I heard that, I just relaxed and said, okay, guys, uh, go for it and let's see what you come up with. Yeah, they're a little, little bit famous. Some people know them. Um, literally, yeah. it is your baby, talcum powder and all. I had no idea. <laughs> Yeah, I never thought about that. Yeah, it, it, I think <laughs> when you say to writers, uh, is this book your baby? They don't have babies <laughs> because your baby is your baby. And, you know, uh, your book is not going to get up at four o'clock in the morning and throw up all of you. So it's... A, it's a... <laughs> Some of them never go to sleep. Um, the film, obviously, because of, of COVID-19, isn't going to have a, a massive cinema release. It's just being released on, on, on Disney+. Plus. That must be a, a little bit of a, a disappointment to you. Initially it was, but it was actually, I was the one pushing for it to go on Disney Plus uh, because I realised that if it didn't, it would be delayed for two more years and possibly end up there anyway. So I thought it would be a fantastic gesture on the part of Disney to just put this massive movie 
online as a you know all people who have subscribed it would be like a little free gift for you it would get a great amount of uh, goodwill and also everybody can see it um so uh yeah i'm initially i was sad but luckily for me i had not bought a tuxedo so i am not i do not have a useless tuxedo hanging in the wardrobe for the premiere i can just watch it in my t-shirt and uh, sweatpants like everybody else <laughs> you can wear them more than once, you know. <laughs> that is true. That that is true, but not at the rate I am growing. I can't. I get. I think every year I need a new jacket, so I need to. I need to look out for that. Uh, are you suffering from the the lockdown munchies? Is that how you've been spending your time during this period? You can't see, but underneath the screen, there's just a big pile of crisp bags. Uh, so <laughs> I, will not, I will not pan the camera down. <laughs> OK, we'll trust you on that. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you so much for speaking to us. I love you. I'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Gillian, can I just say, I think it's cheating that you got Oro to write all your questions. For your <laughs> is that, he knew is that more about it than I did. 